Hi, Pulitz. How are you? Welcome back. This week's Parsha, Parsha Nasso, our Parsha riddle is, what does Chumash have to do with baseball? I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about it while I'll get back to my study and give you the answer. Here we are, back at my study. If you thought about the riddle and you said, I have no idea what Parsha Nasso has to do with baseball, you are correct. It really doesn't have anything to do with it. But what it does have to do reminded me of when I was a kid. On the long Shabbos afternoons, we used to play a game called Chomish Baseball. In hindsight, maybe that's not the best way to use a Chomish. But what we used to do is we used to open the Chomish, find the page, and try to guess how many pages there were to the next Parsha or to the next Aliyah. If you get the next Parsha, that was a home run. And I noticed that when it was Parsha at Nasso, it went on forever till the end of the Parsha. And then I looked at the number, right, by the pay, 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 which is the end of the Parsha, and it said, Kuf Ayin Zion. Look here. 176 seconds, the longest Parsha in the Torah. And the reason has been explained because it's right after Shavuot, and we want to show Hashem we are ready for the Torah. Bring us the biggest Parsha. There's another interesting thing about this Parsha, that if you look at this next clip, you'll notice that the Nesim, the leaders of the Shvatim, right before the Mishkan was started or inaugurated, when Hashem's presence in Shekhinah rested in the Mishkan, they brought Karbonot for the first 12 days of Chodesh, the month of Nisan. And if you notice, they brought the exact same thing. But the interesting thing was, it didn't come because they were copying their friends. It came because they thought of it on their own. Look at this clip. Did you notice the words were all the same, except it said, Biyom HaRishon, Biyom HaSheni, Biyom HaShlishi, all 12 days. And it's been pointed out that we suffer from something called peer pressure. Peer means a friend. Pressure means we have feel pressure to be just like our friends. And sometimes we do things because our friends think they're cool. Or our friends are doing it. Not because we thought of it on our, our own. Not because we even thought about it. Is it right or not? We do it just because our friends do it. And that's called peer pressure. What this part is teaching you is that's not all right. Each one of these Shvatim brought their own carbon, exactly the same. But the Madrashim tell us that they figured out what to bring and what Hashem would want, each one on their own. So it's okay to do exactly what your friend does if you stopped, thought about it, decided whether it was the right thing to do, and then did it. If you all do the same thing, that's fine. But if you're only doing it because your friend does it, and you have to look at them for approval, that's really not so fine. And that's what this Parsha is thinking about, teaching us about. So at the end of the day, and at the end of this Parsha with 176 psukim, the message is do things because you're a good person, and you have your own personality and your own brain. Use them. Don't just follow what your friends do. Be a real person man or woman. Meanwhile, have a Shabbat Shalom, a great Shabbos, and we'll see you next week, the last week of school. Bye.